What's up guys, it's James here again and we're back here for another plugin review. Today we're going to be looking at Forminator, a very popular WordPress plugin for creating forms, quizzes and even online polls. It's one that I've mentioned a lot during my tutorials, so let's actually go ahead and review it. So as previously mentioned, it's a popular one with just over half a million downloads and managing to maintain a 5 star rating. Now I'll be honest, this is one that I personally use myself quite a lot, pretty much on every site because it sort of has a bit of everything. However, Let's just go over everything just so you can see if it's something that you can use yourself or if it would be helpful. So once downloaded, you're going to find the Forminator on the bottom left with all the options that it has here. Let's have a quick run through through the options, which it has the dashboard, forms so you can manage your forms, polls and quizzes, which is something that we haven't actually seen before yet, which is actually you've been able to create a poll and a quiz that you can create videos on your site for visitors to use. I love this feature because it helps with interaction. And the more interaction, the better for SEO, the better for SEO, the higher you rank on Google. But we're not going to go into that. Templates, which is a new thing. Your submissions, so any form submissions, they're going to go there. Add-ons, integrations, reporting from your forms, and of course, settings. So let's get started first with the dashboard and see what the dashboard shows us. Here we can see how many forms we currently have, the last submission for your form, and also polls and quizzes. We basically have a quick place that we can get all of our data we'll go ahead and create from. Next up, we've got forms, which of course is the most important bit of a form plugin. Here we have the choice to either create our first form or go ahead and import. Now, before we go ahead and test all the creation of the new form, I just want to go and point out one of the new things which I actually have put here, which is templates, which other form plugins do actually offer already, which is pre-made templates for certain forms. So for instance, your contact form, a quote request, newsletter sign up, registration, and so on. Obviously, some are locked behind a paywall with a pro version, but you also get some good free ones as well. Now, obviously, this might save you some time in terms of wanting a quick contact form. You can just go ahead, preview, or create this exact form. However, we're going to go back to forms here, and we're going to just start one from the start so you can see how the creation process is as well, and how easy it is to make a form. So we're going to go ahead and create. Here you can pick from any of the templates. If you pray for the pro version, you can also get from cloud templates as well. However, I'm just going to go with a blank form this time. We're going to name our form. And here we have the, uh, the form builder, essentially. It looks a little bit different to the other form builders that we use so far. And rather than being a drag and drop um, so far, we can drag and drop it. You actually use the click insert field section, or you can click the little plus up here. You have quite a nice selection, including name, email, phone number, address, website, radio buttons, date picker, calculations. I've mentioned this before, one of the forms calculations is where you add a certain numerical value to different answers, uh, meaning that you can have different outcomes or like if answers, if somebody answers something or if something is something to show something else. I know that sounded a little bit complicated as I described it then. I do have a video on how to create a calculation form. I'll have that popping up right now. Anyway, we've got everything from a time picker to file uploads, uh, your post data, which I think is really cool, a recapture of course, HTML rating, which is new and free apparently. And the only thing on here, which is actually locked behind the paywall, is an e-signature, which I actually think compared to all the other forms that we've looked at so far, is probably one of the most generous. Other ones have random things behind the paywall. So let's just start with a name. And one thing I'm going to say is that it's it's not hard, but it's not as easy as some other ones. Um, I, I honestly think it's just in the right hardness of being able to get enough settings, enough changes to make it personal, but not, you know, something that nobody can understand. So here we can choose between a single name, we can choose a multiple names there, and it will fill it all in. It's very proactive, and I do love the way it's used. You can add the description, the label, and you also have your settings here, whether this field is required, what message are they going to get if they don't put that field in, and you've got to tell them it's required. You can pre-populate it, change individual styling with CSS, if you know how to do that, and the visibility. I'll show you the visibility with the second one, because I, I find it a very interesting one, something that, you know, is sometimes needed. For instance, if they check a certain box, it means that another answer will pop up and they can answer that answer. If they haven't checked a certain box, that answer won't pop up. So we've got name here. We've got other cool things like file upload. Now, I like this file upload because it's also going to let you choose specific file types. So you don't have to accept all of them. You can say, for instance, I just want to eject, um, accept JPEG. So I'm just going to untick all of these and I'm just going to accept JPEG. That's it. So if anybody else tries to upload anything else but that, it's simply not going to allow them and it's only going to allow that file type, which I think is extremely useful, especially if people try to load anything malicious, choosing how big the file size can be, etc. You can also have it as whether it shows in your media, which is cool. Now, one other thing that I do like about this, let's add something like a text input here. 
And in fact, let's go over visibility first. So visibility now means is that we can now add a rule. So this particular field, my input field, I might not want that to show unless something else has happened. Now, we only have the name, I believe. So, okay, upload. So let's say an upload, and we can then change the rule. So whether it is something, whether it's not something, whether it contains something, whether it does not contain something. This is easier showing with the drop down menu. Let's say, for instance, you have three choices in your drop down menu, and they choose one of the choices. You can then select the drop down menu from here. You can select the choice. And then if that choice pops up, this will then show on your form. Very cool. Um, and yeah, something I really like to use myself. Now to what I was going to tell you that is a drag and drop as well. However, it's not just a drag and drop up and down. You can also put it left and right. So for instance, if I want to fit this to the right of the form, we can now fit left and right, which I've not actually seen in the other forms yet, which I don't know why, because it seems like a, a sensible thing to do. Now, for anybody watching my previous reviews, you probably noticed that I really hate the re uh, the previews. When you click preview, for some reason, all the other forms put it on an entire page. It looks really terrible. Here, I love the preview. This is what I think all form previews should be. As you can see, we see it exactly as the form is going to come out. It's a nice size and it makes sense and it shows you pretty much instantly what you've made changes to. So I know this is a completely dull form. It's just for testing. You've got your send message button here, which you can also change the setting to. You no know, send inquiry, change it to anything like that. Uh, maybe change your visibility or some styling. However, styling can be made a lot easier by coming over to your appearance. Once you've created your form, you can then come over to the appearance tab. And from here, you can change, and I'm not kidding, everything about your form. Everything. Anything from the design style, it gives you a few which are just straight up style changes, which might make it easier. I like to go for the material one. And then underneath, you can then change everything from the uh, layout of it, the colors of it, your fonts, containers, whether you want to put any padding around it. Uh, for instance, if I go preview now, I might say, well, actually, that's not enough padding around the outside. I want to add another 50 pixels. You can do that on here without using the pro version by simply coming over to the padding, change it to custom, 50, 50, and just, you know, change it to whatever padding you want around the form. Same goes with the border, spacing, field containers, and you can still add custom CSS to the whole form. Now, I'm not going to go for everything, otherwise we'll be here for ages. But honestly, it's a huge array for colors. We've got everything from the elements, field basics, submit buttons. So here, for instance, or one of the examples is that we can change the color of the submit button, what happens when you hover over it, and when it's in focus as well. Very awesome. Pretty much change everything about your form. And then preview it just to make sure you're happy. Next up, we go to the behavior. This is where you can choose what happens after the form is filled out. So if you want a thank you message, and not only can you choose whether you want like a thank you message, you want to redirect to a URL, or you want to hide the form, you can also choose multiple ones. So step one could be um, an inline message which says thank you for your form. And then you can then add a further behavior afterwards. You can choose whether it's Ajax or paid reload, validation whether it's on submit or server side. Most of these are quite fine to be left as default. And this is why I first mentioned about it being not that it's not for beginners, it can totally be done by a beginner, but it's not only just for beginners, but it's also for people which want a more expert form, which they can really totally customize. Uh, next up, whether you want autofill security, so you get free Honeypot protection. I believe in the bit forms that we actually had to look at yesterday, um, that you actually had to have the pro version, which is the first time I've seen the pro version. If you do want to see the bit form review, check that out, that's coming up now. Um, you can you can integrate Askimet spam protection, Enable logged in, uh, in submission only. How long the lifespan is, and we got lots of cool settings um, that you, you know you're able to change basically everything off, which I I think is great. Change it to PDF. You do need the pro version, so that's something that you can't get with a free version. And if you do want to upgrade and generate or send PDF files like form entries, receipts, invoices, quotations, etc., you would have to upgrade to pro. Next up, we come to email notifications. Now, this will need to be set up with some sort of SMTP. This won't work if you don't have an SMTP. Bear in mind, submissions will be kept from the forms, so you have your submissions area, which means even if they're not emailed, you will be able to go on your site and check it. However, if you don't have an SMTP or some sort of mailing system set up, then your mail won't get sent to you or whoever you know needs to be notified. As a default, they do it to the admin email. So an admin email, um, which you can also change, will then get this you know, new form from whatever form it is, insert form fields for here. So for instance, I've got all fields. So it will send me an email with all the fields filled out. However, you can also add it from the section over here. You can add the uploaded attachments. 
change your ad recipients at the moment we have the admin email you can also do a comma space and then add more emails to it change your email routing put conditions on it and it's a really neat way of being able to get notified quite quickly that you're under form filled in without having to go onto your site and check it we also with everything else have integration so this is where you can integrate it with stuff like google sheets zapier and other stuff to make your workflow a little bit easier and then we have the individual settings for each form we also have settings as a general for formulator um, however this is just the settings for the uh, individual form itself so i know that was quite in depth um but you know it, it's got a lot to offer here formulator so once we publish as normal um as pretty much every other one you know anything like formidable forms which again we have a review for if you want to check that out popping up now um you're then going to get your formulator code essentially your short code which you can then go and embed into any post or page on your site right forms done um, and let's move down to polls and quizzes essentially another way of creating a different form um, however they've made it easier for you to do that so let's do a very quick so i know it's taking a little bit longer we've got a lot of stuff to look over here the quick test form here as you can imagine actually is quite easy to do so same format with appearance behavior notifications however here you can add your questions add in your answers your submit button you can either add featured images to it i've just done a very quick question and answers to go to a preview here we should be able to see the question and answers there we go um so they can pick you know the answer they think is right and then submit you can change the button text and again very much in the same way as the forms you can customize it completely to how you want increase people using your site clicking it you can gather data from them or just make fun little quizzes and forms or polls now quizzes is pretty much the same we we'll leave that we don't actually need that poll obviously with the polls you will then gather the data in terms of how many people have chosen what the answer is you can then go to quizzes which works much in the same way um, and you know you can add your answers to there and another thing which i find very interesting is that they either have the knowledge quiz or the personality quiz one's based on the final calculated score of the number of right answers and then the other one has outcomes that depend on the visitor's answers so very smart way of going about this i personally love this feature and you know if, if you've got a site which essentially wants interaction with forms or you need to have forms that's a perfect way to do it for free templates we've already gone and shown over submissions is where you're going to find all of your form submissions here you don't need to pay for pro you don't need a second plugin everything will be held for you there all numerically done all the information depending on the settings because sometimes you might have your database cleared every so often you can even keep it lifelong it's completely up to you and you can change that in the settings again integrations these are the actual way you set up the integrations as you can see we have a massive amount of integrations you would need to get the api key from there bring it over connect it and then you can integrate it and like i mentioned google sheets you can do mailchimp on here or even build your own integrations we can go to the report section of the left and here we have the reports for each individual form you can choose your form you can choose your form poll or quiz and then check out the reporting for it finally we have the settings where you can go ahead and change pretty much every setting for your form you can include the recapture which again super important every form should have recapture send an email address settings for the pagination and lots of other settings that you're going to find real useful including a payment setting which you can actually connect without needing the pro version and then collect payments from your forms now once you connect your paypal or your stripe and if i go back to the form let's go ahead and edit but if i remember right i think it's paypal that will um be the free version that you can add on here and apparently you can actually add stripe and paypal to your form with the free version without even having to get the pro version very interesting and quite helpful so guys that is formulator um i again will let you make your own mind up to whether you want to use this or not perhaps it's a bit too complicated for you or it might just be the right thing with all the settings that you need personal opinion on this i actually find it to be one of the best ones so far because it's got the greatest uh, range or freedom of things that you can do on there including the appearance what you can put on your form getting your submissions payments there's only really a few things that you actually have to go pro for such as the templates certain form fields like e-signatures so altogether a very good free form now for any more videos like that i'll have them popping up with more form reviews up on the screen now and don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already to get notified when we upload more videos like this